Hello everyone! Welcome to another learning episode. Again, this is your teacher Merlin saying mabuhay! And our learning episode today is about the radical equation. I am going to show you how to solve for the unknown in the radical equation. Let us first describe radical equation. It is an equation in which a variable is under a radical sign. Now remember the following in solving radical equation. Write the unknown in the left side of the equation. In the case of two or more radicals are observed in the given, separate them by writing one on the left side and the other on the right side. Then, raise both sides of the equation to an exponent similar to the index to solve the equation. Now, I am going to present different kinds of radical equation and the process to solve it. So, let us start solving the following equations. For number 1, the given is the square root of x minus 12 is equal to 0. Since the radical is in the left side already, let us put the constant into the right side by applying addition property of equality. So by adding both sides of the equation by 12, so that negative 12 plus 12 becomes 0 and 0 plus 12 is equal to 12. So the equation becomes the square root of x is equal to 12. Now looking at our index, which is 2, so we have to raise both sides of the equation 2. Then, let us simplify. The square, of, the square root of x is x and the square of 12 is 144. So x equals 144. Before we conclude, let us have first checking. Substituting 144 to x, so the square root of 144 minus 12 is equal to 0. And getting the square root of 144, which is 12, then minus 12 is equal to 0. So 0 is equal to 0. And this is a true statement. Therefore, we can now say that the value of x is 144. Have you observed the process in solving equation? Let us continue with our number 2 example. The given is the square root of x minus 3 is equal to 6. The equation is properly arranged, so let us raise both sides of the equation to so the square of the square root of x minus 3, which is x minus 3, and the square of 6, which is 36, and is simplified to x minus 3 is equal to 36. Let us simplify by applying addition property of equality by adding both sides of the equation by 3. So that negative 3 plus 3 on the left side is eliminated and that value is 0 and 36 plus 3 is 39. So x is equal to 39. Again, let us do first the checking. Substitute 39 in the given equation to so the square root of 39 minus 3 is equal to 6. And 39 minus 3 is 36. So we have the square root of 36 is 6. Therefore, 6 is equal to 6. And this is a true statement. So we have to accept the value of x which is equal to 39. Let me give you a more complicated equation. So for number t, our given is the square root of 5x over 4 minus 8 is equal to 2. 
Observe that constants are separated into left and right side. So, by addition property, by adding both sides by 8, so that negative 8 will be eliminated. So, we will arrive at negative 8 plus 8, which is 0, and then 2 plus 8, which is 10. So, we have the square root of 5x over 4 is equal to 10. Then, getting now the square of both sides. So, the square of the square root of 5x over 4 is 5x over 4. And the square of 10 is 100. Now, by cross multiplication, we can simplify the equation into 5x is equal to 400. To simplify this further, let us divide both sides by 5, so that 5x divided by 5 is x, and 400 divided by 5 is 80. So by checking in our original, by checking in our original equation, the square root of 5x over 4 minus 8 is equal to 2. Let us substitute 80 in x. So, 5 times 80 is equal to 400 divided by 4 is 100. So, the square root of 100 is 10 minus 8 is 2. So, 2 is equal to 2. So, therefore, we can say now that the value of x is equal to 80. Let me give you a higher index radical. So, for number 4, our given is the cube root of y plus 1 is equal to 2. Now, since the given index is 3, we're going to raise both sides to exponent 3. So we have the cube root of y plus 1 is cube, and that is equal to the cube of 2. Now, simplifying this will result to y plus 1 is equal to 8. Let us apply addition property of equality by adding negative 1 on both sides to eliminate 1 on the left side. This will be simplified to 1 minus 1 is 0 plus y, that is y, and 8 minus 1 is 7. So, we have y is equal to 7. Let us check if it satisfies the given equation. Substitute 7 in y so that we have the cube root of 7 plus 1 is equal to 2. So, 7 plus 1 is 8 and the cube root of 8 is 2. Therefore, 2 is equal to 2. So, we have to accept the value of y as 7. Now, let's get a deeper understanding of the process. For number 5, our given is the square root of 2x minus 3 is equal to the square root of x minus 2 plus 1. Now, since the radicals are separated in left and right side, let us square both sides. So, the square of square root of 2x minus 3 is 2x minus 3. And since we have a binomial in the right side, we are going to apply the special product. So, the square of the first term, the square root of x minus 2 plus 2 times the product of the first and the second term. So, we have 2 times the square root of x minus 2 times 1 plus the square of the last term, which is 1. So, let us copy the left side and simplify the right side. The square of the square root of x minus 2 is x minus 2. And 2 times the square root of x minus 2 times 1 is 2 square root of x minus 2. And the square of 1 is 1. 
let us combine negative 2 plus 1, which is a negative 1. And observe that we have an x minus 1 in the right side. At this point, we're going to apply again the addition property of equality by adding both sides by negative x plus 1 to eliminate x minus 1 in the right side. Now, let us combine 2x minus x, which is x, and negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2. Then, copy the right side to square root of x minus 2. Now, since we have a radical, again, at this point, we're going to square both sides. So, the left side is application of the square binomial and the square of x minus 2 is x squared minus 4x plus 4. And the square of 2, square root of x minus 2 is 4 times the quantity of x minus 2. So, if we're going to apply the distributive property, 4 times x is 4x and 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Let us continue on separate sheet. Let us continue on this part. Let us copy the last part where we have x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 4x minus 8. So at this point, we have to apply again the addition property of equality by adding both sides by negative 4x plus 8 to eliminate the uh, right side. Combining similar terms, we have an x squared, the negative 4x plus a negative 4x is negative 8x, and 4 plus 8 is 12, wherein we have 4x minus 4x is 0, and negative 8 plus 8 is 0 on the right side. Now, what are the factors of the result? So, this will give us quantity of x minus 6 times the quantity of x minus 2 is equal to 0. You may recall this part in our first quarter topic. Now, let us apply the zero factor theorem. For x minus 6 is equal to 0, we will get x is equal to 0 plus 6 or 6. Another factor, we have an x minus 2 is equal to 0. Then, 0 plus 2 is equal to 2. So, which of the two values are the solution of the radical equation? So, to answer this, let us do the checking. If the value of x is 6, let us substitute 6 in the given equation. So, 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 3 is 9. So, we have square root of 9. And the square root of 6 minus 2, which is 4 on the right side. Then, plus 1. So, getting the square root of 9, which is 3, and the square root of 4 is 2, plus 1 is also 3. So, we're going to accept the value of x is equal to 6 as part of the solution. How about the other one? If x is equal to 2, let us substitute 2 for x, so that we have the square root of 2 times 2, which is 4. And 4 minus 3 is 1. And the square root of 1 is 1. So we have 1 for the left side. Wherein in the other part, we have the square root of 2 minus 2 is 0. And 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. So therefore, we can say that 1 is equal to 1 is a true statement. Therefore, 2 is also accepted value for x. So, the value of x is either 6 or 2. Now, let me present to you another example. For example, number 6, the given is 4 plus the square root of x minus 2 
it's equal to x. So, let us leave the radical in the left side. So, adding both sides by a negative 4 to eliminate 4 on the left side. So, we have the square root of x minus 2. It's equal to x minus 4. This time, let us square both sides. So, the square, of, the square root of x minus 2 is x minus 2. And the square of x minus 4 is x squared minus 8x plus 16. Let us simplify this by addition property of equality to combine like terms so that if we're going to add the opposite of x minus 2 which is negative x plus 2. The same with the right side. Negative x plus 2 is added. So, x minus x is 0 and negative 2 plus 2 is 0. That is the left side. Wherein, in the right side, we have to copy x squared. The negative 8x minus x is negative 9x. And 16 plus 2 is 18. Okay. Next, how will you factor this? It gives us the quantity of x minus 6 times the quantity of x minus 3 is equal to 0. Now, applying the 0 factor to rem, where x minus 6 is equal to 0, so x is equal to 0 plus 6, or x is equal to 6. The same with the other factor, x minus 3 is equal to 0, so, x is equal to 0 plus 3, or x is equal to 3. Now, let us do the checking. So, substituting the values in our equation, 4 plus the square root of x minus 2 is equal to x. Let us start with x is equal to 6. Let us substitute 6 in x so that... 4 plus the square root of 6 minus 2 is equal to 6. So, simplifying the square root of 6 minus 2, which is the square root of 4. And getting the square root of 4, which is 2. And then adding 4 plus 2 will give us 6. So, 6 is equal to 6. It's a true statement. What if the value of x is equal to 3? So, again, by substitution, 4 plus the square root of 3 minus 2 is equal to 3. So, simplifying the square root of 3 minus 2, which is equal to 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So, adding 4 plus 1 will give us 5, and 5 is not equal to 3. And since the left side is not equal to the right side, the value of x, which is 3, is not accepted. So, only 6 is the accepted value. And x is equal to 3. It's called extraneous root. And it's not to be accepted. So, we have to reject it. That's all for today's episode. I hope you learned and followed the process in finding the correct value of the unknown in the equation. So checking is very important part. It tells you if you arrive at the correct solutions and it tells you which of the values are accepted or not. And for today's food for thought, let me give you this equation. If A is success in life, then A equals X plus Y plus Z. Work is X, Y is play, and Z is keeping your mouth shut. This is by Albert Einstein. So for successful life, enjoy your work and avoid too much complaining. Thank you for watching. God bless everyone.